Hello, hello, hello. This is Elf coming in from Bemis Crafty Corner. And today, I'm going to show you how to do this. And this is my demo. Um, this is the one that I keep out when I go to craft fairs so people can, like, play with it. So it's kind of a little bit beat up, but, um, and it's not fully done. Uh, but I will show you how to complete this. So you will have matting on the front, the top, and the back, as well as on the inside flap. Uh, this project does use magnets. Uh, if you don't have magnets, you can always just hook and loop tape. And if you don't have either one of those, I will show you how to make a belly band for this. And basically all this is is just a little uh, tea cozy. And it holds five packs of tea. And each one of these little slots will hold a pack of tea, a, a tea bag like this, and about two things of sugar. Or you can put uh, eight tea bags in the front and just load up the back with sugar, wherever you want to do it. But um, kind of a cute little project, pretty simple, and it uses basically just some leftover materials. So I'm going to go ahead and get the supply list together for this one, and I'll be back to show you that. But before I do, as always, the instructions for this will be in the uh, drop-down box below, as well as a link if you'd rather just go over and pick it up off my drive, okay? That being said, I'll be right back with a list of supplies. Okay guys, basic tools on this one. You are going to need a scoring tool and a bone folder, some glue, double-sided tape, a pair of scissors, a scoreboard. You are going to need some scrapbook paper, you know, designed card stock, that type of thing. I'm going to be using a piece out of this Sweet Ambrosia pad, which is left over from the journal I just finished. Uh, I have some of these really super thin double-sided sticky dots. If you don't have these, uh, you can just use double-sided tape. You're going to want some of these flat magnets. Again, if you don't have the magnets, that's not a problem. Uh, you can use the small hook and loop tapes. And then you're going to want some scrap cardstock. And this cardstock needs to be at least 12 inches by at least three, uh, three and a half. Okay? So we are going to um, cut some cardstock. And the one I'm going to use today is going to be this one right here, I think, because it's at the bottom of the pile and it's easiest to get to. And a cutter. So you're going to cut a piece of paper that is 11 and 5 eighths by 3 and 1 eighth. So we'll go to 3 and an eighth. And 3 and 1 eighth is the first mark after the 3. Okay? So when you're looking at your board here, you've got your whole number and then you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? So three and one eighth. So I'm just going to cut a strip. That's three and five eighths inch wide. And I'm going to cut a piece that is 11 and five eighths inch long. So basically, I'm going to cut three eighths of an inch. Okay. So if I put this on my board, it's three-eighths of an inch. So I'm just going to take off that little bit. All right, that's the first piece. Now we're going to cut two more pieces that are three and five-eighths by four and a half. So I'm going to go to three and five-eighths. That's one mark past the three and a half. Three and five-eighths by four and a half. And I need two of these. And all of the measurements and quantities are in the description, okay? Two of those. Now the next one you're going to need, um, you're going to need four pieces that are three by three and five eighths, okay? So I have this piece that's left, which is three by three and five eighths. So I'm going to cut three more that look just like this one. So I'm going to go to three and three eighths, three and five eighths. And 
and then I'm going to cut three more at three inches. That should give you a total of five, and you may need you may use five. You only need four, but you may use five. Okay, that's kind of it for this for now. Let's get rid of it, and let's bring out the scoreboard. All right. So on the scoreboard, we're going to take the long piece and place it across the scoreboard. We're going to then score this piece at one and a half okay so right there at one and a half then we're going to score again at three inches then we're going to score again at six and five eighths so six and then one two three four five which is one mark past the six and a half and then one more time at eight and one eighth so we're going to go to eight go one mark over and we're going to go ahead and do that, okay? Then, on the edge that was in the corner, that's the corner we're going to round. So we're just going to round these two corners. And this one. And that's done. We're going to put that aside. Then we're going to get the pieces that we cut two of. Okay, so the two that we cut, these are the ones that are three and five eighths by four and a quarter, uh, four and a half. We're going to put them in to the scoreboard, and we're going to cut, we're going to score these at every three eighths of an inch. So that's one, two, three, and score. One, two, three, score. One, two, three, score. One, two, three, score. The exact measurements, if you want them, are in the description. It's just easier to go one, two, three. One, two, three. And you're just going to do this until you can't do it anymore. Okay? Just like that. You're going to do both of these pieces. All right. So we're going to bring our pieces back up and grab our bone folder. And what we're going to do is we're just going to fold, making sure that they're even on both sides and burnishing our fold lines, okay? We're going to do that on the long piece. And then on these pieces, what you're going to do is you're just going to fold these back and forth like an accordion. Hill and Valley, fan fold, whatever it is you want to call it, okay? And I just do them this way pretty quick. And I'm just making sure that I keep the edges lined up, okay? Both ends need to be lined up, and the edge here should be lined up as I'm doing this. If it gets out of whack, then it's going to be out of alignment, and that's going to be no good. So just fan fold both of these pieces, okay? And then we are going to put this together. Now once I have this done, I typically just take my bone folder and I just kind of go over it. Then I turn the whole thing over and I do the other side, okay? And then I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to kind of open them up a little bit. And I want the end, this end piece, to be facing up, all right? And that's this is where the double-sided tape is going to come in. All right, so you're going to grab your double-sided tape, and you're going to put a piece of double-sided tape on every other piece here. And 
and I'm going to get these all taped up, and then I'll be right back. All right, so I have these all taped up, and I was almost done with this when I realized you guys can't see that red tape. So I went ahead and did this one in white so you could see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, set these next to each other, and I'm going to make sure that the first tape is right there. So let me show you. I'm just going to open this so you can see. So you're going to put tape on every other piece. You're going to skip the first one. You're going to put it on two, four, six, eight, and ten. Nothing on the end, okay? Just fold that back up. So we're going to start this, and the way that we start this is by taking the pieces that we cut that are still flat, and we're going to take one piece, and if you want to put a hole in this, now is the time to do this. If you want to put like a little finger grab, now is the time to do it. And we're just going to keep continuing to do this, okay? So we're going to take off the tape, we're going to lay in the piece, we're going to move on to the next piece. I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I will be right back. Okay, so now we need to cut some mats. We're going to need two long mats, one for the front and one for the back. And then you're going to need three smaller mats, one for the top, one for the front, one for the inside here, okay? Because you're going to be putting a mat here, a mat here, a mat here, and a mat here. And if you kind of line this up, you're already starting to see the shape that we're looking for. So uh, these mats are going to be, you're going to cut two that are two and seven eighths by three and a quarter. And then you're going to cut three that are one and a quarter by two and seven eighths. And you want to be mindful of pattern here. So if you're using something that's a very definitive pattern, watch the pattern when you're cutting this. I'm going to start by cutting my three and a quarter. And then I'm going to cut two pieces that are two and seven eighths. And that is the line just before the three. And then I'm going to cut a piece that is two and seven eighths by one and a quarter. So I'm going to take this piece and we're going to go to two seven eighths. I'm just going to trim a little piece off of here. And then I'm going to cut a piece that is one and a quarter. And then I'm going to cut another piece that's one and a quarter, which should be, yep, that's it right there. And then I just need to cut one more piece that is, um, two and seven eighths by one and a quarter. So I can just cut one strip that's two and seven eighths. Two and seven eighths by one and a quarter right here. Now don't get rid of this entirely because we still have a belly band to make. All right, so that should be all of the mats. And if we cut these right, we should have about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And we do. So I'm going to go ahead and round my corners front and back. And my top and bottom pieces inside and out. And then I am going to ink everything. And then I will be right back. Okay, so with the folds facing up and the small cur corner rounded edge on your left, we're going to start placing these, okay? So you're going to have one piece with the rounded edge, then you'll have your top piece, then you're going to place a piece here and a piece over here. So you just need to glue these down and we will move on from there. Okay, so this is pretty easy stuff here, guys, easy peasy. Um, I went ahead and inked my pieces. I decided to leave the uh, top piece square. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on here. Be mindful if you're using scrapbook paper and not cardstock. It's probably a better idea not to glue these and to just tape them down. But it is a matter of choice. You're looking for that one eighth of an inch. Top and bottom, side to side. Now, if I was using a magnet, I would have put the magnet first but I'm not going to use a magnet on this one. I'm going to use the hook and loop tape, okay?
So I don't worry about all four sides. What I worry about is two sides. If I get two sides lined up, usually the one closest to me and the one on my left, and they're right, then I know the rest of it's going to be right. And using glue, I have just a second to kind of move it. Okay? So four pieces on. Since I'm using the hook and loop tape, I will put the other piece on as well. Now, if you wanted to, you could have gone through beforehand and inked all of these folds. But to be honest with you, the ink is going to thin the paper out a little bit and you're going to weaken the joint. So I wouldn't do that. Now I'm going to flip the whole thing over. I'm going to take the last remaining piece. It's going to go right here on the inside of that flap with the rounded corners. This one's going to go right here. Okay. Now, again, if I was using magnets, I would have put the magnet down before I used, before I put the paper down. But since I have decided on this one, I'm going to be using the hook and loop, loop tape uh, to show you how that works. Since that's the most common way of doing this, um, I decided to forego that. So now, at this point, we're going to go ahead and bring back in our piece, which is the exact same size as the back of the box. <clears throat> so we're going to put some glue on this. I do not recommend using tape on this portion because this is going to have some strain on it. So I recommend that you use glue or glue and tape. And you're going to do these two flaps first. And you're going to line them up one side and then the other. What I do is look to line up my fold right here, top and bottom, and right to the edge. Then once I'm sure I have that, I just kind of press it for a second, hold it, holding the other side up. And then I bring over the other side, and I kind of push that down. And then you can come in here with a flat bone folder and you can press those down. And you're going to give it just a few seconds to dry. And just hold it down. All right. So once that dries, we're going to come back in with our glue, and we're going to put glue on both sides here. Now this part's a little tricky because as you fold in and you push down, the accordion has the tendency to drop. So you just want to make sure that you line that up. And bring that little fold out and then line up the other side with the fold on the outside. And this is where clamps come in real handy if you have them. I go in there with a bone folder and I kind of push that one up and I pinch that one and I clamp this as well, okay? that one and then we'll go over and work the other side and again what we're looking to do is use a bone folder or scissors or whatever you've got to kind of push this piece out to the edge clamp it and grab the bottom and pull that out to the edge you may have to get in there with that bone folder and push it out. Not an easy task. Clamp. And you're just going to let this dry. So we're going to give it a few minutes to dry and I'll be right back. All right, 
We take off our clamps and we have the basis for our box. Now, if you're going to use the hook and loop tape, put this in here real quick so this doesn't dry on me. So if you're going to use hook and loop tape, um, I recommend you use the really small hook and loop, which you can get at just uh, about any craft store. Uh, this stuff does come in a couple of sizes. If you can't find it, let me know. I'll send you a couple. No big deal. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one set of these and you're just going to snip them off. Came off of there. Yep, there's one. And there's one. Okay. So these are sticky backed. So you're going to find that spot up here that you like. And you're just going to drop this on there. Now, if you're using glitter paper like this, try to avoid the glitter or scrape that glitter off because you know glue does not stick to the glitter. And then you're just going to place this by taking the other piece, putting it on, taking off the protective back, And then you're going to take this and find the square and you're going to press that down, hold it, then go inside and give it a pinch. Okay, now you've put your fastener on there. Now, if you want to use a belly band, you should have a piece that's about an inch and three quarters, an inch and a half left. All you're going to do is place this at the front, just below the flap and you're going to finger crease this or finger score around the box trying not to compress the box you should have a substantial amount left so once you have that just make sure you've got your creases in there and that they're straight Give them a press. And then just kind of set it around your box, overlap your two pieces, and then I kind of look at this and kind of figure where the middle mark is, and I just kind of put a little mark there. So that's about middle for me. So I'm going to cut that piece off. Okay. And again, I'm just going to dry fit. It's beautiful. I'm going to put some glue on here. And I'm going to bring my two ends together. And I'm not going to press down on this, okay? I don't want to press this down so that I can't get it off of here. Just slide the box out. And now I can put all the pressure I need to on here, okay? Now once I have this, I can decorate this any way that I want. Alright, so I have another, because I just want this to be a little bit thicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on the back here. And I'm going to match it up with this one. Be 
go. Just like that. And then I'm going to use this to go right over here. So we're going to put a little bit of glue here. We're going to cover up the seam and give it just a few seconds to dry. And then this slides over this just like that. Okay, so there's our little tea cozy all finished out. And I'll just slide the belly band off. I'm going to go ahead and open it right here. And then I can go ahead and just fit in some packs of tea. Two, three, four, five packs of tea. And then an extra place right here in the back to tuck in some sugar. Uh, close it right back up and slide the belly band right back onto it. There you go. You could even finish this off if you wanted to with a couple of little crystals on the top or something just to dress it up. It's entirely up to you. But that's it. That is the, uh, the Tea Cozy. There's the original um, with the magnet closure. And here's the one that we made today. Just a few basic tools and some glue and some scraps of paper. One piece of cardstock basically makes this and then just some scraps for the decorations. Again, if you want the instructions, there is, they are all in the description below. You can just cut and paste if you want to, or you can follow the link and go over to my Google Drive and pick up this document and just print it out and be able to watch the video and have all the measurements there for yourself, okay? That's it, guys. Thank you so much. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that red button and subscribe for me, like me, ring my bell, and share me with all your friends. Bye-bye.